Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Bloom. I'm with the uh, a president of the International Society of Guatemala Collectors. Uh, this is part four of five of the Essays and Proofs of Guatemala, covering the years 1943 to 1952. This would seem to be a rather limited number of years for a whole presentation, but there's actually a lot of material. Uh, I wanted to make special point about a designer whose name is Arnaldo Chavari. Chavari is a very important part of today's presentation. His designs uh, began appearing in 1945 and continue to appear into the 1970s. I was very fortunate to purchase part of the collection of a man named Rakoy. Rakoy put together a wonderful collection of Guatemala. Somehow the later years of that collection sat around for a long time. I was able to purchase it as, as one big lot, uh, actually on eBay. Some of this material comes from that purchase. So here we are, we're in, we're in 1943. And uh, as you'll remember, on almost every slide in the upper right hand corner is the stamp as issued and below it are all the essays and proofs. One of the um, designers beside Shivari was a man named Fred Odin. And this is one of Odin's uh, essays, uh, very much uh, based on the same photograph of this particular police building. There are significant differences between the essay and the issued stamp, as you can see. For example, the flying letter G and aero exterior. Uh, so in any case, it didn't issue exactly this way. There was, in 1944, there was a National Palace commemorative, the Palacio Nacional, and uh, it was based on a photograph. You actually see the photograph below. This essay is a photographic paste up it consists of a photograph of the building onto which are literally pasted the other elements of the design. Notice something is missing here, the word Guatemala. I believe that there was a piece of um, art that was pasted near the top that said Guatemala, but I believe that fell off. Now, uh, in the uh, Guatemala number no. one catalog, there's a showing of three essays labeled A, B, and C that were pasted to a card. Uh, I think that the card no longer exists because I actually have the three essays pulled from this card. Essay, essay number three in the lower right is the final essay. Notice. Guatemala and where it's located. If you go back just one slide, I think Guatemala was in this area where there seems to have been some adhesive left. So this is the one in the lower right that basically came to issue. And uh, Shivari and Caballos were credited with the design and the engraving of this particular stamp. Uh, in 1945, there were a set of five stamps issued to celebrate the liberation of Guatemala. And what you see in the, in the uh, stamps that were issued is an allegory of the revolution. It shows victory holding up a torch and a rifle with a cannon firing. The sun raise, rises over a new day and there are representative figures of the people who took part in the revolution. You can see a soldier, a student, a worker, and a woman. Well, originally uh, there was a drawing done by Shivari. You'll see a lot of Shivari artwork here. Shivari uh, created this design, which is, uses some of the same allegorical figures, but this design was not accepted. Actually, it was accepted, but then rejected. So it says accepted on it, approbado, but then it was rejected. Uh, this uh, drawing was made on October 25th, 1944. 
uh, the uh, Shivari eventually produced this essay, which is very, very close on the stamp that was issued. And you see uh, Teller de Grabados, the national printer of Guatemala, their stamp of approval in, in purple color at the bottom. The uh, National Palace Airmail of 1945 was overprinted. When we talk about essays, we often think about new designs uh, where there are line drawings, photographs, and so on. But there are also essays of overprints. That is, overprints that were trial and never came to issue. If you look at this stamp closely, on the left, it says normal overprint. And uh, as an essay, the same overprint was tried with a date added, 25th of June, 1944. The block of uh, 12 stamps on the right is a block of those essays. And we believe it's the largest multiple of this essay in existence. One of the interesting things about essays is to go back and see what the original, very first source of, of, of uh, photographic or artistic information is. Where did the, where did the uh, engraver go, the artist, for inspiration and for images? What we're going to see today are uh, several things. We're going to see the artist's inspirations being a photograph, a sculpture, and an oil painting, all three as motivators for the artist. So here's a photograph of um, uh, Jose Mila y uh, Vidor. And please uh, understand, my, I'm not a Spanish speaker, so my pronunciation is probably terrible. But here's, here's a photograph of him. And from that, Shivari made a series of essays. Just to point out uh, on the essays, um, the, the artist would often write down the size of the anticipated stamp. So you'll see here in pencil is written 20 by 25 millimeters. That was the intention anyway. And the stamp, if you compare the essay to the issued stamps on top, uh, the, the issued stamps are more rectangular and the essays are more square. There's also a bit of a mystery to the stamp. The stamp was issued in both a brown sepia color and also a blue color. And no one knows why it was issued in two colors. No one has come up with a good reason. So uh, Shivari um, tried again. It was rejected again. Uh, now uh, to the right on the bottom is a, an essay of the frame of the stamp. And if you compare the essay to the issued stamp, it's very, very close indeed. Finally, uh, here's the accepted design. Notice originally, go back a few slides, the intention was 20 by 25. If you look at the accepted essay, now the intention is rectangular, 20 by 27. Uh, so this is marked approved. It contains the hand stamp of the Direction General, the Communications Postal, etc. Now we go to the uh, Revolution Anniversary Commemoratives of 1945. Uh, these stamps were issued in 1945, but a few years later, they reissued the stamps with an updated date. Now here are two rejected essays on the Numbered five and six, we think there were nine in the series, including an accepted essay. I have not seen the accepted essay, nor have I seen numbers one to four. Uh, but these, these essays were to be either 20 by 27 millimeters or 18 by 25. And again, they're signed Shivari. Now notice that, um, C-H-Y, the letters C-H-Y are Shivari's 
uh, indicia. And on many of the issued Javari stamps, you'll see CHY. Now, I know you can't see it in the slide, but if you look at the lower right-hand corner of each of these two stamps, furthest to the right, you can actually make out the letters CHY. So he left his mark on the stamps themselves. Here's another interesting case. Uh, again, uh, Shivari. Now, this, these photographs I'm showing you are not just random photographs. These are from the Guatemalan archives, or maybe I should say, yeah, from the Guatemalan archives. So these were actually in Shivari's hands. They're not just, you know, a, a, a random photograph. So here's the photograph and the interpretation in the final stamp, which shows, which shows um, uh, Frey Pio and an inkwell with, with a uh, quill, a feather pen. Shivari again tried different layouts for this. Shivari seemed to offer two or three versions of, of most of his designs. And uh, you can see a tremendous difference here. The, uh, the, the, the vignettes, the pictures of uh, Fray Pio are pretty similar. Um, but again, these uh, originally are maybe a little bit more square. They're meant to be 15 by 20 millimeters. And uh, th these series are often talked about in literature in uh, G1 in that watch, or this would be in G2, it's a little later than G1. This would be in G2. They mention these, but they're very rarely found illustrated. So very few people have actually seen these essays. And again, we see the accepted um, frame essay, and we see the final accepted essay, which is now 20 by 27. If we go back one or two, 15 by 20, and, and now it's approved at 20 by 27. Uh, in this period, there are many, many die proofs and some plate proofs that are worth considering. For example, here's a set of sunken die uh, color trial proofs. Notice they're all in the two centavo denomination. They're all denominated two centavos, but in many, many different colors. Now here, here's an interesting case. Again, Mont, Montefor, Montefor, Montefor. Again, the designer is Arnaldo Chivari, our friend. And uh, here we, we start with a sculpture and we have a photograph of the sculpture. So Chivari didn't work with the sculpture, he worked with a photograph of it. And here you can see uh, his first essay, which is pretty far off from the issued stamps. And we, I don't have an essay in my possession. Uh, now, obviously there are several more in existence. This is numbered number three. Um, I someday hope to find one and two. <laughs> we know they exist. The Independence Anniversary Airmails of 1946 are quite interesting because of the uh, artistic way in which they originate. Here's a case where we start with an oil painting. There's a very famous oil painting of the signing of the United States Declaration of Independence. Here's a painting of the Guatemalan Declaration of Independence. The photograph I have of the painting is cropped on the sides, so it doesn't show everyone uh, the way the photograph does. So, um, Shivari got his hands on a photograph of the oil painting, and then he started producing essays from that. And here we see his work based on, on the, uh, of the photograph. Here are two rejected essays. You can see how they vary quite a bit from the issued stamps. I think they're both pretty attractive, actually. I'm not sure why they picked the third. Why they pick the one in red rather. And here again, we have the accepted frame design and the accepted final design. And this is just really a blow up 
of the final accepted design. Can you, can you imagine the skill it takes to produce these kinds of essays? Wow. And again, many, many, many kinds of proofs here, color trial dye proofs this time, all the cent 10 centavos on a thin brownish gummed paper. And now on a medium white, medium, I'm sorry, white medium thickness paper, all in 10 centavos. Uh, color trial dye proofs on cardstock. I wonder why they tried so many types of paper. Here we come to the uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt issue. It was interesting, Shivari uh, did the successful uh, in, uh, design of the FDR Memorial, which I believe the, this is, these are the first images of uh, FDR after he died of, of any country. Uh, Shivari, uh, you'll see maybe uh, in the next presentation, also did a, an essay uh, of Eleanor Roosevelt. And when we look at the Eleanor Roosevelt, that was almost rejected because Shivari really made Eleanor look terrible. But here we see the six issued values. We see a blow up of the uh, five centavo value. But here we see Shivari's uh, final sketch. Uh, there are some differences, you know, looking closely, you can spend a lot of time with this, but for example, the lines of shading go right through the date in the essay, but not in the issued stamps. Uh, the Franklin, De Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, is in italics in the essay. And uh, there's just a, there's a lot you can explore here little differences in the frame lines. Uh, one of the interesting things about the essays is that uh, there are little notations on the right about the shading lines and so on. It was also envisioned that this could be issued in two different sizes, 18 by 25 or 25 by 30. Uh, now here again, this is based on a sculpture uh, of uh, Las Casas in Guatemala City. So we have a sculpture, a photograph of the sculpture that again was in Shivari's hands. Here we see the uh, issued stamps. Uh, this particular stamp uh, has a lot of different varieties that are collectible, differences in paper, differences in perforation. Uh, they were issued over a long period of time. And here we see some a rejected essay of the stamp and the accepted essay. And again, we, we have an awful lot of, of color trial dye proofs. This time they're all three centavo values. One interesting uh, essay, uh, or I'm sorry, probably play proof, not essay, uh, is a perforated version on thick paper. So I'm not sure why they perforated the, the, the uh, proofs and they did it on thick paper. In 1950, uh, they wanted to issue, Guatemala wanted to issue a set of uh, stamps dealing with uh, tourism. These are very colorful stamps, but one of the interesting aspects of the stamps is the source of the artwork. Uh, there were a few photographers, oops, we go back one. There were a few photographers who submitted photographs. One of them was a man, A.G. Robinson, who was a member of the International Society of Guatemala Collectors, who lived in Guatemala. And he contributed photographs for the five centavos, the 13 centavos, and the 35 centavos. So you can see the three stamps, the three, the, um, I'm sorry, three, the 13, and the 35. And you can see this is the actual photograph that um, that Mr. Robinson submitted, not a copy of the photograph, but the actual photograph that resulted in this stamp. Uh, there's another man, Roberto Alvarez, and actually two men, Alver Roberto Alvarez and Luis Legrand. 
they were two professional Guatemalan photographers and their uh, photos were also mirrored in the stamps themselves. When I say mirrored, if you look at the eight centavo, then look at the photograph of the church, notice that the church is mirrored. It's a mirrored image of the photograph. That happens a lot. The tourism airmails, some essays were made of them that are, that are unique. Um, for, based on, on what's published in, in G2, the set you see here of these essays is the only set in existence. Uh, they were designed by Austrian printers. Uh, they're mounted on a card and they're in vertical and horizontal format and um, the numbers, the values are very prominent on each of these. So the ones you're looking at are the only ones in existence. They did some interesting color trials on this series. And uh, it's a little bit difficult in some cases to compare uh, the colors. They, don't, they look like they match, but on close observation, they don't. So the, here are the stamps is issued, and if you spend time with it, you'll see some subtle color variations between the color trial proofs and the issued stamps. Uh, they also had some progressive dye proofs. Here's a 13 centavos uh, uh, woman weaving stamp, and you see here some color trial proofs, but these are partial. The first four are partial proofs, and the last one is a complete proof. Uh, in 1950 to 51, there were stamps issued having to do with uh, social assistance and public health. Here we see the full set of seven stamps. Uh, the uh, regular air mail, three of those. I'm sorry, regular stamps, not air mail, regular as issued. And then the four air mail stamps. Souvenir sheets were issued, both imperforate and perforate. And there are some interesting dye proofs. Um, here are two of the dye proofs. Uh, the stamps, here are the stamps again as issued. Some of the plate proofs, they experimented with reversing the inks. For example, in the first stamp, it's red on the outside, blue on the inside. And this is just the opposite, red on the inside, blue on the outside. So all of these plate proofs have the colors reversed. There are some interesting varieties, by the way, of this five centavo stamp. Um, when the stamp was first uh, issued, um, British Honduras, uh, was made to look uh, separate from Guatemala, completely separate. And at that time, there was dispute between the countries uh, and Guatemala claimed British Honduras, which became Belize. So uh, some stamps went out originally showing British Honduras as uh, very, very separate, but they were later corrected to make it look like part of Guatemala. Uh, in 1951, Guatemala issued a souvenir sheet celebrating the uh, UPU, Universal Postal Union, uh, from 1874 when Guatemala joined to 1949. Uh, the sheet um, issued a couple of years after it was supposed to. Now, both of these images were designed by Shivari, but and the uh, the Quetzal. This particular Quetzal design, after the souvenir sheet was issued, it continued to be issued as a separate perforated stamp for many years in many colors, many values, many papers, fluorescent, non-fluorescent, and so on. The, um, the, the shield stamp is a replica of the first stamp series of Guatemala from 1871. And uh, th this 10 centavo value uh, was attempted in different uh, color trials. Uh, they had some perforated plate proofs. These are perforated plate proofs. Notice the spacing, the vertical spacing between them is very, very wide. 
between them. Um, oh, this, what you're looking at on the lower right, in 1950, Mr. Robinson, remember Mr. Robinson? He was one of those photographers who photographed the tourist spots. Well, he went to the um, collection of the government printing office and he took pictures of these proofs, these different color proofs, which as far as I know, have not been seen outside of the archives. Now here's a very interesting series, the 1951 Model Schools issue. Uh, there was a competition in Guatemala uh, to uh, design the ideal school building, like an elementary school building. And um, the idea was to standardize on a school design and anytime schools were built to build it in that design. Well, what, the, what they did was instead of just designing something on paper, they built wooden models of the schools. These are photographs of the wooden models. Now, there were three designs. We see two of them here. Uh, the quadrant design on the lower left has a, uh, a workshop, a four classrooms, a workshop, patio, auditorium, and office. It was used for the one in four cent values. And there's an imprint on the back, a photo Alvarez. Remember Alvarez, one of those photographers. Uh, the type B is a semi-circular design where the rooms kind of radiate from the center and uh, they were used on the half cent and two cent values. We do not have a photograph, well, we, me, I don't have a photograph of type C, which did not become a stamp. So when the, when the call went out for um, designs for the model schools issue. Um, the uh, essays uh, were submitted by the Staatsdruckerei Wien in, Wien in Vienna, and three artist sketches were also submitted to the EA Wright Banknote Company, an unsuccessful bidder. These three essays, again, I've only seen the ones I have. They're fairly crude, a kind of a wash, and um, it shows it shows those those styles. Um, I think that the the right the ten cent on the right may be representative of the type C classroom. Remember, we didn't have a photograph for that classroom. Well, um, for this uh, we, again, we have a number of dye proofs. What's interesting about the dye proofs is that they're perforated. Now. Uh, each of these was hand numbered from one to seven. There were seven in the series and they had both vertical and horizontal presentations <coughs> making these into little perforated sheetlets. So here we see type A, classroom type A. We see all the different colors, but for a two centavo value. This now is type B, what you see here. There were, um, Remember, if we go back one, the series begins with one and runs to seven. One to seven is the type A classroom. Eight to 12 is the type B classroom, all in two centavo values, numbered eight to 12. Well, they actually did issue die proofs for the type C. Remember, we, we don't, I don't have a photograph of type C. But this is what type C looked like, much more circular, and runs from 15 to 21. So uh, this, this covers um, all of them that I know. I don't know what, what happened to 13 and 14. Someone's going to have to tell me about that. So um, very similar to those die proofs are dye proofs in the issued colors. But notice if you look at an issued stamp, see the imprint Vien. In these proofs, there is no imprint. Okay, I remember I said before that they reissued the Frey Pio issue. All they did was they changed the dates. And again, we see uh, in half centavos values, 
um, multiple color dye proofs. Again, in one centavo values, uh, color trial dye proofs. In two centavo values, very similar. In four centavos, very similar again. And that is the end of the presentation. So um, I'm going to turn it back to our fearless leader. And I will take any questions or comments. Thank you, Michael. Nice seeing this progressive view of all the essays from Guatemala. That's really good. There's, there's more. I'm, I'm um, finding new ones every day. It's very exciting. Yeah. There, there was a comment in the chat, and I actually agreed. Some of those uh, unadopted designs, they are a lot nicer than the actual stamp that was issued. So, so I was wondering, who do you know any, anything related to the selection process? Who were there? <laughs> I, wish, I wish I did. I think it's just an aesthetic decision. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that the uh, postmaster director probably made those choices. Uh, they were submitted to the printer, and then the printers probably submitted them to the government. And I don't know if the printers had any choice. Yeah, but they're they're lovely. Yeah, some, those sketches just always amaze me. Yeah, some of the types they use. Yeah, I, I don't remember what page exactly, but you know the the type of font they use for the name Guatemala was really really nice. Just as a little bit of a teaser, if you, if you don't mind, I'm just going to hold this up. Sure, go ahead. See if, see if you can see it. Um, yeah, we could. Okay. This is uh, Shivari doing Eleanor Roosevelt. Oh. Oh, Stephanie, what, what happened to him that day? That doesn't look like her at all. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> there, there are some issues. Also, when he, when he was, when Shivari was designing Eleanor, uh, let's see if I can show this. He did some experimenting with the fonts for the numbers and so on, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I just uh, I just purchased this. So I'm excited about it, but it'll be part of um, I think ne the next presentation. No, look, they they look nice, and it's amazing the amount of material you have collected through from you know such a long period and all essays which usually are hard to find. So. I can imagine the amount of years you put well, in to get into this point. It took quite a long time. The, the buying that Rakoi collection made a big difference. Uh, by the way, anyone who's listening, if you run across the sale of any essays and proofs of Guatemala, please let me know. I have a few people who tell me they find things that I probably wouldn't have found. So um, the collecting community has been very helpful. If we see anything, we let you know. I don't know if there is any question out there. I don't see any hand. It might be one. Oh, Guillermo, go ahead. Hi, Michael. How Hi, Guillermo. You? This is actually the first time I see it live, so congratulations. Uh, thank you. Well, you know, Guillermo actually, I don't know if Guillermo knows this, but he's been so helpful to me over the years in finding material, and, and I've learned a lot from Guillermo, so uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I sent you an email yesterday about some, with some comments about uh, last week's uh, presentation. So we yes, can discuss that you. afterwards. Your, uh, your, your store of knowledge is amazing. I may not get back to you immediately because life gets a little crazy here, but I will. No, no problem. No, I have a question and I'm actually rather surprised to see essays from the Stad Druckery Vine because El, El Salvador has a lot of issues made by them during the 60s. And I have never seen an essay from El Salvador. So I was wondering uh, if there is any reference about the essays or where where did you got them or- Well, just I just- more background info, please. I, like I just bought a series of essays. Uh, here's here's the cover from Staatsdruckerei, right? And I have many of these of uh, different issues. I get them, all different places. This was a, an auction lot from Cafila in, um, in, Par in Paris, in France. They seem to be a very good source for this kind of material. Um, but I just, I get it here and there. Uh, it's, a, it's out there. 
but I never see this. I never see the same thing twice. So I, I, I would assume a booklet like this. I would assume that there must be more than one, but I've never run across a duplicate of the full booklets. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Any other question or comments for Michael? I have a question. Go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, I, I'd like to be in more of these meetings and uh, I don't think I'm a member of Mi Oficina. How does one join? Alfonso. <laughs> What's that? We, we have a WhatsApp run by Alfonso Molina. So just send me your uh, cell phone number and I'd ask him to add you. And typically okay. we meet same same time, Friday and Saturdays to record, right. but every day people are around, so. Okay, yeah, great. I'm gonna charge uh, you 50 bucks. No? <laughs> <laughs> it would be well worth making a donation. It looks like a wonderful organization. Yeah, we are. COVID had something positive. And I'm just making myself a note to Henry to send you phone number. Yeah, just send me your cell phone. We add you over there. Okay, yeah. I don't see anyone else with. I want to show uh, the National oh. Steel and Guiding Workshop. The last year, uh, for the 80 years, print three foliares. Uh, we are si lo logro proyectar aquí. Ponlo ahí, te, y ahí lo jalamos. Sí, voy a ver ahorita. Eh, creo que lo voy a quitar aquí el fondo. Sí. Pues aquí está el... What, what am I looking at? Oh, Shivari oh, and Bilak. Yeah, yes. if, you, if you put that close, you can see what Mr. Mr. Shivari looks like. Um, it's Shivari and Leon Bilak who were friends. And the funny thing is that Shivari designed the stamp with his picture on it. <laughs> yes, this is the other side. The... Yeah, I have some uh, copies of the stamp signed by by uh, by Shivari or Bilak. This is uh, then the second one, Anordo oh. Shivari. Oh, oh, oh! I'd love to see if you can scan that. I'd love to see a picture of it. You know, of this booklet. And the other one is uh, the tribute to uh, a designer. Oh, tribute. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. In the oh, thank, thank post, you, Carlos. In the post office, in now, uh, one, the last uh, month that I went there, they have these uh, three folders in to take them. As, uh, Carlos, is that in uh, Guatemala? Are you in Guatemala City? Yes, I am here in Guatemala. Okay, Carlos, maybe uh, you can help me with something. Uh, Carlos, I am producing a new series of books on Guatemala and uh, combining G1, G2, what I call G3, other materials, all beautifully color illustrated. And as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, I'd like to bring up uh, something I'm working on. I'm, uh, you can still see my screen. I, did I stop sharing? Yeah. I stopped sharing. Let me share, share for a moment. Okay, let me um, bring this up. Um, hold on a second. Um, let me get out of this. Close this. Uh, bring up this. This will just take me a moment or two. This is a part of the uh, work in progress. It takes a moment to load. But actually, I think this group might like to see what the book sort of looks like. Yeah, uh, we will be interested in knowing your methodology for that because I, I made a comment about you running the, the update for, for those books and, and it will be worthwhile if 
we can set up a, you know, one presentation about the methodology you're going about it. I, I would love to do that, Henry. I'm actually going to be giving that presentation at several STEM shows, uh, awesome. including Great America STEM show. But here, okay, so here's here's an example. Okay, this is a page from the new book. Okay. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's going to be fully fully color illustrated. It's, we've never had color illustrations before in any of our classic books. We we um, don't see the share, uh, Michael. Oh, you don't not see the share. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, hold on a second. Um, we'll get this set up in a second. Oh, I see why. Okay. Okay, you should see share now. And now you should see the page. Can, can you see it now? Yes, we can see it. Yeah, okay. Can. If All you right, can so make I, it a little bigger because you... Yes, I can. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make it so that um, it spreads out a little bit more. Right. You can see, I think, the quality of the photographs. Everything is very well scanned. Lots of information. These these are all very modern stamps. But uh, so let me just uh, stop that and stop sharing for a moment and bring everyone back. So C Carlos, here's here's my problem. We have information on Guatemala stamps up until 2007. That's the latest year we have our publications for. Of course, we have the lab work of the field and. I think so. I'm sorry. So yeah, we, we, that, have yeah. some, we have some information in El Quetzal, but I need someone, hopefully in Guatemala, who can give me information on stamps after 2007. For example, information including who the printer is, uh, the format like seven by nine, um, uh, information about the subject matter, Maybe that's something that, that you can help with, Carlos. Yes, um, I was a part of the ESG, ESGC, and I can help all, for all this information. Uh, some, the last month, I talked with Yomara de Leon, the designer of the stamps. So if she can give me all the, the first day stamp uh, cancellation, ¿cómo se dice? <laughs> postmark, postmark. Postmark, postmark uh, the first uh, day postmarks to give to you to the when is the month to put all the first day postmarks um what I, carlos what i can do is i can give you the, the scott catalog numbers of all the stamps where we need information yes uh, you can give me the the list and i can work with uh, the the I have here the um, I have all the the trifoliares of all the um, oh fantastic that's all the information all, you're looking for the, 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 wonderful the, of all the missions and I can take the information there for you great great I'll make I'll make a list for you Carlos yes and okay. I'll send it to you and um, I'll send you a copy or, or access. If Alfonso include you in the group of WhatsApp, you can write me there. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, are you are you a member of ISGC now? Yes, I am a member of the. Okay, I, so I probably I probably have all your contact information. Yes, there. you have my 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 email and all my information. Okay, my great. Team. Michael. Yes. I send you a mail with my mobile number. Please send me a message to add to the Mi Oficina group. Perfect. Let me just check the email. Um, one moment. Make sure I have it. Yes, I have it. Okay. Yeah, great. We tend to be real time as much as we can, so this is fantastic. <laughs> that's that's great. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's what's wonderful about being members of these organizations so many people have specialized knowledge. Yes, and here you have pretty much all Latin America represented. So we echo right. from, from one place or the other. There is another right. hand out there, Guillermo. Yeah, and again, in the spirit of being real time, 
uh, what, I, what I wanted to share, Michael, is a bit of what I sent you in the, in the email, considering that there are no other questions. Uh, last week... Uh, yeah. Do you want me to display the email? No, I can, I can show the images. Okay. I have them here. Great. Uh, last week you mentioned and you asked about some essays, some whitewash essays that uh, from the 1930s that one had the name wrong, misspelled, and the other one had the name right. And I happen to have some essays that are very similar. So I'm going to share the screen. It looks it looks so similar. It really okay. does. The ones that just to refresh everyone's memory, the ones I showed were of a volcano. Phil? Yeah, I don't know if you want to share them and then I share these so we can compare. That, that could be also good. Um, let me just think. I, could do that. Um, hold on a moment. I need to find it. Let me see. I have. I have also your presentation handy if you want. Well, it's um, well. Let, let's just say that um, it looks so similar to to what uh, Guillermo is showing. G give, give me a second, Michael. I have it here. Oh, okay. You, you can. So so everybody. A lot, a lot of people were already present, but but we can we can do this. Okay. Um, Give me a sec. And the essay you show also has a big typo in the name, right? Salva. Yeah. Yes. So these are the ones that you showed, no? Here you go. Yes, those are the ones I showed. And um, let me share the other ones. So this is, is Mr. Here you go. <laughs> uh, also on line paper. Yeah. Exactly. Also on line paper. Also, this one is pasted on the line paper. And then you have another one that shows the legend accepted, also very similar. And, and I can tell you for sure that it's from an American banknote company because uh, yesterday, Ross Taula gave a presentation about American banknote company material. And he mentioned some photographic records albums that were done between the 19, well, for El Salvador has material between the 1910s and the 1949. So one of the stamps in this photographic record is the one that you, you can see here. Mm. Mm. This was actually a non-adopted essay. You can see it says destroyed. Uh -huh. uh, so this is basically the only the only known copy of the actual image of what what uh -huh. was going to be a stamp. I see. Uh, and and the two and the two wash drawings are precisely that, no? Oh, interesting. So this is from the American banknote. So most probably yours. I'm ninety-five percent sure that this could be pretty much sourced to the same place. Well, thank you. I would not have known that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And and the other question, the, the other comment that you made yesterday was about an essay that uh, you. You discussed a lot when I saw the the, the presentation about the, the independence, and and I was a bit puzzled. And, and this is more a question than than anything else, Michael. I was a bit puzzled that you mentioned that El Salvador was not joining the this this attempt of federation in 1921 because they they actually did, and it happens that. The, the coat of arms that you see there is actually a current coat of arms of El Salvador and Nicaragua. They are very similar, no? Uh, and the legend Dios Unión Libertad is also on, the, on one of the flag, official flags of El Salvador, but it was also a motto used during the Central American Federation. So everything comes from, from the Central American Federation uh, that existed between 1829, uh, 22, 23, sorry, and 1839. And, and you can see a contemporary stamp of El Salvador issued in 1921. This one has an overprint, but was the image that I had handy. But you can see Central America and you can see Estado El Salvador, no? Mm -hmm. So just, just to perhaps set the record straight regarding El Salvador's participation there, no? Honestly, I, I don't know where I got the information. Uh, it's one of those things, you know, you, you pick it up in some resource, but I, I don't know much about it. 
No, that's okay. I just 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 wanted to, to ask and clarify, no? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. Very good. Very good. Great. Any other question or comment? I do not see anyone. Okay. So Michael, thank you very much. We appreciate this series. It's very, very informational. Okay. Well, it's my pleasure being here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.